welcome to the Jody Bunting podcast, where today we're talking about how to be a healthy vegan for Veganuary. And of course, we all got back on our podcast, my daughter, Phoebe Hope, who is a PT. She's been a vegan for one year and she likes to be a clean vegan. That's why we've got her on here. Hi, Phoebs. Hi, uh, you're right. I'm great. Thank you very much. So we are talking about veganism this time. So you're working as a personal trainer at Everlast Gym in Derby. How is it being a vegan? Difficult. <laughs> uh, you get a lot of criticism. I think definitely in the fitness industry, people are very into protein. And for most people, that means meat. Uh, yeah. So going in and telling people I was a vegan I did get a lot of stick I have to say uh, we joke about it but I know part of the stuff they say isn't a joke um but yeah it can be difficult you just have to not listen too much other people's opinions though and just trust with what you know and and I think that's true for anything in life really and I love just pointing out how there is uh, a great amount of uh, plant protein out there. And actually, you don't need meat at all for protein. So that's a it's a good nutritional chat you can have with people who are doing that. Yeah. So yeah. tell us, how did you get into becoming a vegan? It was actually Veganuary last year um, and I just did it purely as a challenge. I, I'm quite a competitive person sometimes and I think other people at my last workplace at Weight Watchers were doing the Veganuary as a challenge for January um, and that was all it stemmed from was just wanting to join in on this challenge uh, and also to lose weight as well. So at the time, you know, this time last year, um, December last year, I was quite overweight I was about two stone heavier than I am now and I think I thought that going vegan I'd be able to easily cut out a lot of things just because I was a vegan uh, so that was why I wanted to start doing it but as I started researching some of the recipes um, and some of the arguments behind it just learning more about veganism I realized that it totally aligned with my values because I am an animal lover I realized that it was for me and I haven't looked back since. I think it's probably one of the best decisions I've ever made to go vegan. I feel better and I eat better and I'm healthier and happier. So, yeah, I never look back. And probably now is a good time to share with everybody that I am doing Veganuary from tomorrow. Uh, and I've st I've signed up to the mailing list for the because the Veganuary is basically a charity organization that just promotes veganism. Um, and they send you daily tips. And like you said there, you got inspired by the information they were giving you. And I am also finding it inspiring. It's great just to hear all the different stories and the fact that they, you know, they're not pushing you to go completely meat free. You know, if you make a little mistake, it's not about that. It is about just lowering your protein intake as well. So your meat intake. So that's the good news about the whole organization. It's not this on it, off it sort of thing, which, again, most diets and health things are yeah definitely and I support anyone even when they just say that they're trying to eat less meat I think that's a great thing or, or eat less dairy or eggs or whatever because it's not about being perfect and I know some people in any culture or you know whatever they're supporting will say you have to be 100% on it I don't believe that I think you know anything that you can do just reducing meat a little bit I think that's going to help the environment and your health as well so you don't have to be completely 100% on it you know and this is where I think a lot of people can slip up is they make that one mistake and then yeah. they think oh, I've ruined it now and then they go back to their old ways and it's when we start in that all or nothing thinking that it does become quite unhealthy for us and there's something called meat free Mondays as well that's probably a, a good thing to to try as well as a little challenge if people yeah, don't feel like they can that's go been completely. Going on for years hasn't it meat free yeah. Mondays and I think that is more of an environmental thing and all of these different reasons that I never knew about any of it before I went vegan no one else I know is vegan oh that light's just gone off <laughs> no one else I know is a vegan or I don't think I even that was like one vegetarian that I was friends with when I was younger but apart from that I didn't know anything about it so 
if you're trying it i would say just do some research the veganuary emails were amazing i learned so many things from that that i didn't know um which really changed my outlook on on the different industries so yeah it's worth researching now let's talk benefits um yeah. what are generally the benefits for being vegan and what of what benefits have you found personally so definitely the weight loss was the first one that I noticed. I lost weight really quickly uh, when I started to eat a vegan diet and I was still eating a lot of food as well. The thing is with vegan food is it's got less calories in it so you can eat more and still lose weight. I think that was the thing I was amazed about when I first started doing it. Um, another thing that changed really quickly for me was my gut health. So I had had problems with my gut before for quite a long time and it changed really quickly and I started to feel a lot better in myself. I had better energy levels. I was sleeping better. I found it easier getting up in the mornings because my mental health was better. Uh, my skin was better. I could go on and on really. I slept yeah. better at night as well because I feel like... Um, when I started to find out about the different industries and the ethical reasons for going vegan, it honestly made me really upset with myself that I had been eating meat for so long and not thinking twice about it. So it made me feel better in myself that I was living more in line with my actual morals. Yeah. So just endless benefits, really. And with regards to fitness, did you notice that you were more active? It helped you with fitness? Yeah, I definitely think my energy levels went up a lot. I started to feel less sluggish, especially because I focused on more of the whole foods, plant based direction. So less processed food and more of the natural side of things. I saw massive boosts in my energy and therefore was able to exercise more and enjoyed it more as well. Now, let's talk uh, vegan mistakes. Uh, when you first became vegan and was chatting, you know, one thing that I remember was, oh, yeah, honey's not vegan, is it? <laughs> no, that is I did. Um, I know someone who's been vegan for a few years now and they didn't know until recently that honey wasn't vegan and they've been having it for years. <laughs> um, so, yeah, vegan <laughs> veganism doesn't include honey because that's made by bees. Um, that's quite a little mistake. I don't think I would judge anyone for making that because a lot of people make that mistake. Um, but there are a, a few other things. So one of the main ones that we've talked about before is not getting enough of things. So things like protein, enough calories, especially if you are into building muscle, you want to make sure that you're eating more food so yeah. that you're getting enough calories and also getting the right nutrients as well. So taking a B12 vitamin is really important because that's something that we only get from meat. A lot of animals, this is going a little bit off topic, but a lot of animals are actually given B12 as a vitamin. So we don't get it naturally. Even people who eat meat don't get it naturally. The yeah. animal is just given B12 as a vitamin and then we get it through them. But if you're not eating meat, you do have to take it yourself. So just making sure that you're still getting enough of all of those things um, and not just taking things out of your diet without putting other new things back in again. Because it's great just to research it because you start to realize how the whole farming industry is completely subsidized by the government. And yeah. we can talk about it for hours, but it's I think it's something it is a personal discovery that you have to find out about and start yeah. to realize. The problem is, once you start going down that rabbit hole, you start to think that everything is a conspiracy against you trying to warp your mind. So I think this is where you do have to go on your personal journey. But as you said, um, just trying to find out as much information about these things is the best. Yeah. And forming your own opinion on it as well, yeah. not just copying what your friends or family think, but actually watching the documentaries or whatever it is that, you know, takes your interest and forming your own opinion on it. And when I did that, I realised actually what I've been doing isn't in line with what I believe and who I am as a person. If it is, then, you know, go ahead, do whatever suits you, but yeah. actually make sure you think about it and, and whether that, what's right for you. What about clothing and especially shoes, leather shoes? They're not vegan, are they? No, yeah, this is another thing that people can get quite bogged down by, I think. And I was 
kind of panicking because I remember I had just got a pair of leather boots for Christmas and then I decided to go vegan in the January and it's like well I've got these like amazing boots that I love what do I do with them and I still wear them now because I already have them and I feel like it would be the biggest disrespect to the animal to just put them in the bin um and I I really like them so I'm still going to wear them until they're worn out but I just wouldn't buy another pair of leather boots now I would buy vegan leather or something different um and I would say that's the same for anyone I do know some people like uh, Gaz Oakley he's a famous YouTuber um he makes vegan food on YouTube and I know I'm pretty sure he got rid of all his stuff and bought all new stuff I n most people though we, we don't have that kind of money do we we can't just buy a whole new wardrobe or whatever so just go, you know go, cope with whatever you have not everyone goes fully vegan as well some people just stay plant-based which is just when you eat vegan food but you don't bother so much about vegan beauty products or vegan clothes and it's fine it's whatever suits you whatever you can afford to do as well so this is where this term plant-based has come from then because it's people who want to be nutritionally vegan but maybe other areas of their life they're not ready to change yet yeah definitely so being vegan is not a diet it is a lifestyle so it includes get vegan clothes vegan skincare acting in more sustainable ways whereas being plant-based literally just refers to the diet so it just yeah. means that you wouldn't eat meat fish dairy products eggs honey which is why I'm guessing most businesses say they're plant-based because they don't want to associate themselves with kind of vegan extremism, but they just want to be yeah. profitable for everybody. When I first went vegan, I actually didn't call myself a vegan. I said that I was plant-based and that's just because I think there's quite a stigma around vegans. Like I I know I've seen loads of memes on Facebook. People always post horrible things about vegans, don't they? And I yeah. didn't want that association. But now I don't mind because I know what it stands for and I'm proud to be a vegan. But before I did call myself plant based just because of the stigma around the word vegan. Um, but it's fine that like you said, that's a transition that other other people can find where they sit on that and what they want to identify as. But you don't even have to say you're plant based. You can just say that you're trying not to eat meat or you're trying not yeah. to eat animal products. And with regards to that whole stigma and everything, you have a uh, vegan partner currently uh, and you've got yeah. some new vegan friends. Do you think that's important? Does it make life easier? Yeah, so much easier. Like I'm uh, at my partner's flat now and I know because his flatmate is also vegan, there will be no vegan food in this house. I don't have to see anyone eat meat. I don't have to have any arguments with anyone about how I'm not getting enough protein because I don't eat meat. And it just makes life so much easier. Um, when I was with my last partner, he was quite judgmental about it. And other people I've encountered have been quite judgmental about it and people love to comment don't they whatever you're doing people love to criticize you so having people around you that understand can make such a big difference even Facebook groups like I remember the Veganuary Facebook group was a real lifeline for me in that first month because there were so many good tips and recipes being posted in there and I didn't like I said I didn't know anyone else that had the same beliefs as me at that point so just having this group of people even though it was just on Facebook really helped me to feel like I wasn't alone on my journey yeah, yeah. right let's talk vegan pets vegan yeah. animals so you've got a lovely large dog yeah Could, very big do you dog, think yeah. pets can be vegan Definitely. Um, right now, because of where I'm living, my dog is living with my auntie. She's fostering him at the moment um, and he's not vegan because they aren't. But 100 percent when I have him back living with me, he will be on a vegan diet because I've done my own research and I know that it's actually healthy for dogs. Yes, he likes to eat meat. I'm not going to argue that he wouldn't choose me over vegan food, but that is how I believe I want him to be fed. Unfortunately, though, I do also have a snake who cannot eat vegan food. <laughs> I did Google it. <laughs> but no, snakes can't eat vegan food. <laughs> but the interesting thing about Zephyr, who is your, your dog, I've oh, seen him eat carrots and spinach. Oh, yeah. And he, he literally it. wolfs it down like it was meat, <laughs> doesn't he? 
he does he thinks a carrot is a treat he really <laughs> loves it <laughs> and that's not me training him to think that he always loved carrots and I, th I think a lot of other dogs too as well and fruit he loves watermelon so it's not animal cruelty to give yeah. them vegetables um it's just a different way of life but after I've adjusted to it I I don't think I could bring myself to buy a lot of meat now um so I think I that he'll have to go vegan yeah and I think to be honest it's the, the same as the human nutrients as long as getting his protein as long as he's getting his fat and all the essential oils actually there's no reason why he can't follow a plant-based diet no no there isn't and it's just certain animals that can't like cats can't cats need meat in their diet um, yeah. snakes as well like obligate carnivores it's called um so be careful what your pet is whether you put them on a vegan diet or not do a little bit of research um but yeah don't feel guilty as well if if you have to buy like I have to buy frozen mice for my snake and sometimes I cry <laughs> now sometimes I cry when I when she has to have bigger mice and I have to see bigger mice being defrosted sometimes it really upsets me because I know what's had to happen like they put them in gas chambers to kill the mice and that does really upset me sometimes and some people would say I'm not vegan because yeah. I have a snake and because I feed her mice but like I had her before I converted so yeah. I'm not just going to give her up or I'm not just going to stop feeding her I have to yeah. cut myself a bit of slack and say you know this is your responsibility so you have to do it you know whether you like it or not Right now, let's talk about your favorite foods, your favorite recipes. Yeah. Okay. So I have got a list here. I could go on and on and on, probably for hours about my favorite foods, but I've, I've managed <laughs> to narrow it down a bit. So the top one, I know a lot of people don't like this, but it's tofu. I have to admit, when I first tried tofu, I didn't like it at all. And I just didn't have it again for a few months, I think. Um, what about you like tofu, don't you? yeah and i think it's like pasta if you had like mm. cooked pasta with nothing on it it would taste the same as tofu <laughs> it is it's it's a base really isn't it it doesn't have much flavor itself but it's about what you put with it um and the first time i tried it i didn't understand that and i just kind of ate it in a sauce i think not marinated or anything and it was horrible um but since then i've got loads of different recipes that i've tried and i do really enjoy it so some of the favorite ones i've had are more of a chinese style so we do a um, sticky black pepper tofu and that is so nice um also you can crisp it up as well so if you kind of do like flour or breadcrumbs on it and then fry it in oil or do in in the air fryer. It goes a really nice um, like chicken nugget y style nice. uh, tofu. Or you can even there's different kinds of tofu. So there's the silken tofu, and that's a different texture. It's more soft, and you can use that for like creamy sauces. So I've made a really nice like cheese style tofu sauce with pasta before. That was really good. Um, and also you can even use it for desserts as well so you, if you add chocolate to the silken tofu you can make a like chocolate mousse or even cheesecake you can make with silken tofu so it's really versatile and it's got a lot of protein in it as well and so we've had we've shared before uh bean curd in the chinese oh, yeah. which is the which is basically the name for tofu isn't it in asian yeah. restaurants yeah what what was your favorite meal out with uh vegan foods mm. i think um it's probably got to be uh at wagamama's they have really good vegan food i really like um asian food so they do a firecracker tofu that's really good they also do a tofu katsu curry that I love um but I like to replicate those things at home as well although I like to eat out I also like to eat at home and replicate things because you're, you feel more proud I think if you've yeah. made it yourself um and it's fun as well I like cooking so you've made um, vegan sushi as well haven't you Oh yeah, sushi is was my favorite food before I went vegan and it was probably the thing I was most worried about missing because I thought well it's fish, you know, so I'm not going to be able to replicate fish. But actually I've had a lot of sushi either with fish alternatives um which wasabi do some really good um like fish alternatives on their sushi 
gorgeous with veg in there or even tofu again we've made it before with tofu in the uh in the roll so yeah there's loads of different things and like sushi and pizza were my favorite foods before and yeah. they're still my favorite foods i just have yeah. the vegan version and you can do that with anything like i honestly think there's any food that you used to love you can veganize it it's, it's just a case of tapping it into youtube or google or looking for it in a restaurant and you'll be able to find something which is similar sometimes even better honestly I think some of the sushi I've had since going vegan is better than what I had before because yeah. they put more thought into it because they don't have the meat or they don't have the go-to thing they have to put a bit more thought into how they're going to make it nice and sometimes you get better flavor combinations because of that my favorite uh, vegan food is avocado. Oh, yeah. Do you like it? What do you do with it? I do like avocado. I really like Mexican food. So probably the most common way I would use avocado is make guacamole and then put it in probably like a burrito or some kind of wrap with beans or lentils or chickpeas. I eat a lot of that kind of food because it's just really filling and I can pack a lot of protein into there as well. Right. Now, I, as we said, I am becoming vegan from tomorrow for the month of January. What are the easiest ways that you've learned to be a vegan? So one of the key things for me was definitely finding out about some of the ethical reasons and the arguments for two reasons. OK, so the first one is to keep you motivated. I remember there was times before when I had cravings for cheese when I was a new vegan and literally all I had to do was think about some of the videos that I've seen now of how cows are treated in the dairy industry, that kind of thing. And it will put you off immediately. So do a little bit of research into that side of things that will keep you motivated. The other reason is if you get anyone try to argue with you, you've got an argument to come back with. Not everyone will listen. They will just be ignorant still. But it's nice if someone does criticize you to be able to give a solid reason for why you're doing it rather than just letting them criticize you because that never feels good. So do a little bit of research into why you're doing it and the benefits, not just for yourself, but the environment, et cetera, as well. Um, also connecting with other vegans, I think is definitely key. I know you've joined the Facebook group, uh, the Veganuary one, so that'll be really helpful. And just reaching out if you feel like, you know, you're going to give up or you don't know what to eat or anything like that. Just reaching out, you know, watching something on YouTube or Googling something. It can just give you that bit of information or, or that connection that you need to keep you going with it. And then finally, what are your top three tips to be vegan? So I would say focusing on the things that you can add to your diet rather than the things that are being taken out of your diet. And this is the same, I believe, for any diet or lifestyle change that you make. Don't focus on what you're missing out on because it will make you feel quite depressed and it will make you feel like you are missing out. Whereas if you focus on all the new things that you could be trying, that would be more exciting and you're much more likely to stick with those new habits that you're making if you do that. Also linking in with that one, the second top tip is definitely to try new foods. So don't just take meat out of your diet, add in different things as well, because there's so many cuisines, especially like in Asia and Africa, that actually have been cooking vegan recipes historically, you know, for hundreds or thousands of years. It's not a new thing. There are probably millions of recipes that you could be trying. So trying different cultures, different recipes definitely keeps it exciting. And like I said, you don't feel like you're missing out then. It's about a journey of discovering new foods. And then I think the last thing is not thinking that you have to be perfect with it. And again, this applies to anything in life. I think that if you are in that all or nothing mindset, then if you slip up, you're not going to stick with it. I know I did it when I first went vegan. I accidentally put some blue cheese dressing on my salad while I was at a buffet. 
sat down, didn't think anything of it. I didn't even look at the label. I didn't even know it was blue cheese. I just picked up some random dressing and put it on my salad, sat down and took a bite. And I was like, oh, that is cheese. <laughs> I was like, I'm not meant to be eating cheese because I'm doing veganuary. I didn't eat the rest of it. Unfortunately, that did go to waste because I don't even like blue cheese dressing. That's the really annoying thing. Um, and I was like, at that point, I could have said, oh, well, I've ruined it now. You know, I've ate cheese. So yeah. I've ruined Veganuary. So I may as well go back to what I was doing before. And actually, it's that all or nothing mindset that can be really dangerous to making changes in our lifestyle. So you just have to kind of give yourself a break. If you accidentally eat something that's not vegan, or maybe it wasn't even an accident, maybe you just had a really bad craving and the thing was right in front of you and you just couldn't help yourself. Don't think that you ruined it at that point. Don't think, oh, well, I, I'm finished now, so I'll just stop. Just carry on doing it. No one's going to judge you for having that mistake. We, we've all done it. So just yeah. carry on. Yeah. Going back to your point about other cultures, you know, naturally being vegan. Mm, yeah. um, when I was living in Egypt, every single street corner had like um, street food with falafel and what they called full, which is basically mashed beans. Oh, um, yeah. And the reason they had all this falafel and stuff was just because of poverty. And it's yeah. just so cheap beans chickpeas you know the amount of food you can make with the these beans and these lentils is unbelievable look at um uh, in curry naturally uh indians are vegan and they all eat dal all day every day yeah it, it can be so cheap and i hate it this is the biggest thing that i hate about people making misconceptions about me being vegan is they assume that i'm posh because I'm vegan and I am so far from posh. Like I, I probably spend, this is not even a lie, I probably spend about 12 to 15 pound a week on my food shop at Aldi. Amazing. Like compared to the average person who eats, you know, all of the meat and things. Because the meat is normally the most expensive part of the meal. Yeah, isn't it? look so at when fish, you take so that expensive. Out, you end up spending a lot less. It's not always the case. If you buy a lot of processed vegan stuff, I'll give you that. But if you're actually having healthy, natural vegan foods, it's so much cheaper than eating meat and dairy and everything. So yeah, that's probably one of the biggest misconceptions is that it's posh and it's expensive. It really, really doesn't have to be. <laughs> uh, we should mention also that time when we went to the cafe and um, we ordered uh, one vegan drink and three uh, normal drinks. And the girl, we didn't say who was who, and she just looked straight at you saying, and asked you your preference, didn't you? Yeah, she, she. I think she, we said uh, we wanted a vegan hot chocolate and then three non-vegan drinks. And then she looked straight at me and she was like, do you want oat milk or soy milk? <laughs> <laughs> she knew it was me straight away. And I have had that comment that I look like a vegan. <laughs> I don't really know what that means. But I think but... <laughs> you should take it as a compliment. You really? I think it just I means guess. that you're, you're thin and healthy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. I, or that it's the younger generation, I think. The younger generation. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> But yeah, that it's not even a new thing. Like I said, for hundreds of years, people have been vegan. So it, it is a death. Again, that is a misconception. Right now, today is New Year's Eve. So I've got to ask you this question. What are your New Year's resolutions or goals for 2023? So I have quite a lot of fitness related goals as a PT. Obviously, that's a big focus of mine. Um, I won't bore you with all of the exact weights that I want to be able to lift by the end of the year. Um, but I have a lot of goals around weightlifting. One of my goals is to be able to do pull ups this year as well. Um, and then more general things are that I want to spend less time on social media because the amount of time I spend on social media is absolutely disgusting. I had a look at my stats yesterday. I had to really hype myself up to do it because I knew it was going to be bad. Um, but I eventually made myself look and it was something like six hours a day average I spend on my phone, which I'm gutted about because it used to be so much better than that so that's definitely a focus um and then also getting back into a better morning routine as well things have been a bit crazy for me the last few months with uh, working two jobs starting my own business 
um and then moving house as well it's all just been a bit crazy uh so getting back into a, a morning routine I like to get up at five o'clock in the morning and I want to get back into that because that's when I like to exercise early in the morning and then I'm set up for the day so definitely that one as well great and how can people find you what if they want to ask your questions or pt with you at everlast uh so i mostly use instagram so my handle is at phoebe hope pt um and then yeah that's the main way to get in contact with me is instagram yeah and if she doesn't get back to you in a few hours she will <laughs> yeah I, if i don't get back to you straight away then it means i've i've stop myself from using instagram and you should be really proud of me uh but i'll probably reply straight away because i'll be on there already i'm 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 trying to limit mine in a different way on the new yeah. year i'm doing sundays completely offline so i'll still Ooh, be able yeah. to use my phone for pictures and stuff but disconnecting from the internet completely for one day of the week that's my goal yeah, yeah i like that one i don't think i can do that though <laughs> <laughs> Mind extreme. <laughs> it, is. it is. Right. Great. Thank you so much, Phoebs. Uh, we will see you again soon. Maybe we'll have another check in yeah. later on in the month to see how the January is going. Yeah. Good luck with it all. I hope that you love it. Great. I'm sure I will. Yeah. Right. Thank you very much. No worries. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Please remember to like, give me a comment, share with your friends and of course subscribe to my channel. Thank you.